Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me and for another of my wonderful interviews. Now, as you know, every now and again, we start talking about money on this channel. After all, we're slightly concerned the government's pushing us towards these CBDCs. It may not just be the government. I think there's a, a world domination in CBDCs coming and it's programmable money that people are not terribly happy with because they know exactly what you're doing and what you're buying and perhaps could stop you buying the things they don't want you buying. So um, people are looking for additional ways or um, perhaps older fashioned ways of doing it, ways that we've bartered, we've sold, we've bought, we've traded in the past. And what better way than dealing with precious metals? So we spoke to a, a gentleman who runs an outfit who does gold backs. As you may remember, this is gold. I think it was a thousandth of a troy ounce of gold between two polymer sheets, which looked like notes. And we spoke about that because it's quite handy to be able to have them in your pocket. But what about going, never mind all of that fancy stuff, what about the basic stuff itself, gold and silver and other things? Well, I thought it's high time we found out a bit more about it. So I have asked Caroline Savage from Blair Bullion to come on the show and tell us about the advantages of buying gold, silver and any other precious metals. Caroline, welcome to the show. Hi, I'm lovely to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I know that you are um, a, a friend of Eli Everyman, who's been on the show. So it's nice to have a friendly uh, gold merchant, a uh, merchant, would you be called a merchant or agent or dealer? William dealer. Dealer. De there we go. Got to get get the right get the right terms, Vobes. Um, so it's 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 nice to know that because um, we are in very strange times, and when dealing in something like gold or silver, I think trust must be high up there. So before we get onto the actual products in itself, maybe you could tell us a bit about. How, how does anybody, if they're buying gold and silver, how would they trust the person they're buying from? Um, you need to do your research. And um, if you have a look at them online, that's a good place to start. How long they've been in business? Are there any reviews? Do you know anyone who's dealt with them? Um, so I think, and it also depends a bit about what kind of company you want to deal with. So, a lot of our customers come to us because we give them a bit more than just, we do more than just sell to them. We like right. to help them to make sure that they've got, they're buying the right thing for the right purpose. And if you go onto a, a review site, we use FIFO, you can see what all their customers have said about them. So they're independent reviews, There's FIFO, some companies are more on Trustpilot, um, Google reviews, so, um, you know, those are the places that I would look um, right. to research. But you have to be careful buying on places like eBay because you don't know who you're dealing with and there's no protection, really. Yeah. I mean, I, I just thought it would be worth talking about trust because the first thing that went through my mind is you might spend, you know, whatever money it is, it might be a small amount, might be a large amount. And then if you get back something which isn't, perhaps the correct, um, oh, I don't know the terms now, you're going to tell me uh, the terms, I'm sure, you know, the amount of gold that's in there mixed with whatever yeah. else is in there. Um, and if you get, if you or, or you get something that's lead sprayed gold and you go, oh, look at this lovely gold. And somebody says, uh, no, that's not gold. gold. Um, it, so trust must be absolutely um, paramount. And, and I guess also you're building a relationship if you're buying gold silver whatever over time and you're whatever you're using it for for investment or for using in a sort of commercial way um as in buying and selling um, well, i then, think there's nothing wrong with buying from someone you trust know and trust privately if it's, hmm. you know yeah. one of my customers bought something and they wanted to sell it to a friend rather than back to a dealer why not why you not know, but if yeah. you're buying from someone just so, you know, ask for proof of purchase, where did it come from? And you know, just so that you know that it's that the person you bought it from did the checks they should have done. I have seen some very good fake bars. Have you? So, yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure actually, you know, I say have you as if it's like, oh, have you? That sounds, I'm sure you have. 
come across and, and that must be very difficult for people if they've bought a lot of, spent a lot of money and it turns out not to be what it says yeah and then and then there's no redress so like everything it's uh, you've got to be cautious on how you deal with it mm-hmm. the other thing that i wanted to ask you which i found fascinating having spoken to you before we um filmed was that you can buy say gold or silver and there is a second hand or previously owned type but it's exactly the same but but brand new will be obviously more well I say obviously is more expensive than that that, that actually just because somebody's owned it before it sort of devalues a bit which is very weird isn't it because you just think well the metal in and of itself hasn't changed it might be the packaging or the fact that someone's just held it for a while why is that well, when we buy from a dealer, we're paying the cost of production. So you have the basic price of the gold itself. And then on top of that, you have to add in the cost of the packaging. Um, if I show you some pieces. Mm, please do. This, this one, put... is that showing in the right place? Yeah, that's it. I've got the whole picture that, there, yeah. That's wow, a, look at that. That's a pre-owned um, 100 gram gold bar now you see this sort of funny edging down the side that's yes. um that's just a plastic film that protects the actual cover the, the actual hard plastic this is a hard plastic here right. and that's yep. from getting scratched so you can see it's peeled off a bit on the back there so that under oh, I see. It, you know it would look it would look like brand new if you peeled that off yes um, this is a new bar. It's a different size. It's a one ounce bar, but it's got the same uh, sort of packaging on it. And that's, um, you know, so this one we bought from a customer and paid a bit less than spot price for it. Whereas this one, we paid all the full markups on it. So we have to charge more for it. Yeah. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. Because when you, I mean, if it's brand new, it's got to be got out of the ground or sourced wherever it comes from. And I don't know too much, you know, I can't imagine that you're down by some creek with a with one of those things going, oh, okay, we've got a few more customers, I've got to go and sift for gold. But it's got, it, it comes from somewhere. And then it's got to be processed and put into those bars so that people can store it and keep it and it's and authenticated. And then um, it, it's pure... Uh, um, and, I, and I hope to find out about the, the metals that are in there because they're different. You're going to have to help me out because I'm struggling here on yeah. the, t- the terminology that you purity. use for the purity. Purity, yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. So these are 24 karat gold. So, yeah, now this is something that we all hear, don't we? We all hear, oh, yes, it's 24 karat gold or it's, <laughs> it's so many carats. It's got nothing to do with groceries. What does that mean, the carat bit? Okay, so 24 karat is pure. Um, there are other expressions for it. Now, if you look carefully, you can see... Oh, hang on. <laughs> can you see that? Uh, yeah, yeah, if you put it, put it more in front of your face, and then we'll see it, even if you... Can, that, no, in, in front of the camera, but... Hang on. <laughs> like, yeah, that's it. Keep going, keep going. So it's a coordination when you see... It's coordinate. Yeah, absolutely. Um. So can you see the numbers on it? It says 999.9. Oh, yes, that's right. Like, right. yeah, 9.999.9, yeah. That's parts per thousand. Ah, right. So when I, because I, I got into my head and I understood from the guy we spoke to about the gold backs, which was a thousandth of a troy ounce. Is that the same mm-hmm. sort of thing? Uh, uh, so that's uh, well he is that's the quantity of gold so no it's not the same thing. oh no not the oh oh yes because we're talking purity yeah so so this is the purity so it's it's 0.1 percent point no point zero 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 one percent might not be um, right might but not it's be as gold. close as you're going to get to yeah because you know, like a fly might have got in it or something, you know. Yeah, so, so although, it's pr- but, but other it's than, yeah. Traces of another metal, you know, yeah. in, is probably more likely. But it doesn't get any better than, than 
yeah, yeah. forward planes. It's so if you have less carrot, carrot, yeah, twenty-four yeah. carat is, it. and if you want to understand uh, the difference in value between say nine carat and twenty and twenty-four carat, so a sovereign. I'll show you a sovereign, but this is um, that's the Queen Victoria sovereign that we've got there. Oh yeah, okay. Um, and that's what the size of a pound coin now, roughly, is it? About that. that, yeah. It's a lot thinner. Oh yeah, thin as a five penny bit. And that's got seven point three two grams of gold in it. So right. it's less. It's uh, four of these weigh less than the one ounce coin. Right. Um, so yeah. So it's less. There's less gold in it, and its purity. Um, the purity of this is 22 carats. 22. Yeah. So, got, yeah, so so clearly if you're buying stuff like this, you've got to have a, a knowledge of of the the weight it is and the purity of it is. Yeah. Um, which you pick up very quickly once you're, you know, dealing in in this sort of thing. Um, and because and people buy rings and uh, watches and various things or even, you know, f have fillings of gold teeth and things, which again must vary not only the quantity but the purity of those things. The purity. So if, for example, you wanted to work out how much your nine carat gold chain is worth, if you stick it on the scales and weigh it, you look up the price of 24 carat. Now, if you do the maths, you divide... 9 by 24 and that gives you three, um, 0.375 so it's 37.5% of the amount of gold right so and you then... take the 24 carat price so the price on the market multiply by 0.375 and that would tell you the value the spot value of that piece of gold and the, and the, what does what does that mean the spot value i hear that term and i and i think to myself what does that mean uh, the spot price is um, the market price right that goes up okay. and down all the yes. time so okay the price changes as people buy and sell around the world yeah and different exchanges will have their own spot price so there's no one single world price Right. Oh, that's good. Although we oh. do have like the London fixes, which is another thing again, but it follows. It closely follows what the world spot price is doing. And when you buy, uh, just to, before we get move away from things like um, chains and watches and rings and things, mm -hmm. if you buy those and you think you know you think oh you're getting a bargain or something or you've got some you find some in your uh, an heirloom or something. Um, what happens to them? Do they get melt? Do they ever get melted down and turned into something else, or are they genuinely just left as they are and part of a a collection of stuff? Yeah. Well, you know, it's like here's a box full of jewelry and, and we've weighed it all out and it's worth this much money, or or I'm not suggesting that people smelt it themselves, but that 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 the the world that you know whoever it is that does this professionally and properly. Is that what happens to them? Yeah, I mean, we can send off scrap gold and companies like Baird, this is what they make, that's what they use. They, you know, they make the, most of the bars are probably made from recycled metals. And ah, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so, so that's a process, but it hasn't changed the fact that it's been smelted down or anything like that. If, if they can know that it can be 999.9, uh, as as best you can, twenty four carat. So what would happen if you whatever you had, if we sent it off, they would uh, when it was received, it would be checked and assayed, and then we would get paid for the amount of gold that is in that piece. And we yeah. see the hallmarks, which should tell us what it is. But um, you know that's that's what we go by is what the what comes back as assay. And same and and of course same with silver. I'm just thinking I was up in Sheffield many many years ago doing some corporate filming for somebody, and we went to because Sheffield is the knife and fork capital of the world, 
and we went to this very dead posh place and he was showing us all these knives and forks all in solid silver with hallmarks on the back and and i suppose again that's something that could be very easily overlooked because not so many people these days have those sort of knives and forks in their collection but they might ha- pick one up from a charity shop and not realize that there it is it's a, a silver fork with a, a genuine hallmark on it that it might be worth something you know even if it's just worth 30 quid it's worth something yeah, I, I mean a lot of that stuff though is electro plated so it's just it's oh all oh, right a layer of silver on it so you need to don't get too excited all right. look at the okay. hallmark carefully <laughs> yes okay all right so um now i have been given let me show off my um my wealth here caroline i have been given over the last six months i suppose at, at certain places by my viewers or people i've spoken to i mean very generously some silver coins um they're all more or less the same size i've got four of them and they i'm told that they're worth about 30 pounds each silver some have got the queen's head there's one i don't like handling it too much because it's got the king's head on it the new king and um my thoughts on him is somewhat different to the queen although my thoughts on the queen have changed a hell of a lot in recent times some are from canada some one's from america and the other two are from Britain. They are beautiful things, though, silver coins. Um, I imagine gold is the same, and I, I'm saving up to buy some gold. Um, but in the meantime, they are very beautiful um, when you compare them to the money that we normally, the coins that we normally carry, the sort of grotty, nasty-looking coins. Um, they are. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, so my question, well, first of all, I know that you were a bit... Um, concerned that I was handling them with my bare hands before we started yeah. and you said oh wait what are you doing Richard so tell yeah, us why I'm that's a problem <laughs> because there are oils in your skin and the oils will react with the um with the metal so and and once once a coin starts to tarnish it's really difficult to clean it you don't right. really want to be rubbing a coin um at all if you can help it um, right. Does that devalue them? Well, yes and no. It's still a, it's still an ounce of silver. So, uh, but aesthetically, I suppose if you've got one that's not so nice and the other one that is, so you know, the buyer will go for the good one, and and the other one will just still sit languishing on the shelf, looking. Put, sorry put for it this way. way: if I have to sell it on my website, say you come to me and you want to sell your silver. Yes. And, and I'm thinking that I need to, I'm going to sell this to someone else. I don't want them to be complaining. So I've got to be open about the condition of that coin. So right. if it was if you were buying a coin that had blackened bits on it or it was scratched, you'd expect to pay less for it, wouldn't you? Yes. Yes. So yes. So yeah. No. So it's that's. I mean, that's very interesting, really, because people might think, and certainly I did, um, that. Well, it's silver. What's the matter with you? What's the problem? But as you've just alluded there, I mean, at the end of the day, we're all human, aren't we? We're all going to go, well, I don't like the look of that one. Thanks very much. You've exactly. sold me a dud. Yeah. Um, can can you clean them yourself? Are there spe- Presumably yeah. there's special polishes and things. You can. Um, I mean, I tend to not bother really. And you know, I might if it's a very light mark. We we sell silver cloths that you, they're impregnated, and they'll take right. light um, stuff in it. If you want to take the oils off that you deposited, Richard, yeah, <laughs> and then and it might be an idea to give them a little clean with one of those, and then put them in away in either a capsule like this. Um, we sell, oh, I see. Oh, yes. You can buy those on their own as well. Um, and I haven't got any plastic clips in, um, or just in a in a plastic bag. Right. Oh, okay. You know, like um, we do coin flips. So when we send them out, they would come either in in a capsule like that, or in a tube. So that's that's a tube. Oh. <laughs> oh, I see. In a little plastic box. Tube for gold Britannias. Oh, okay. And this is a silver Philharmonica tube. So there's oh, 
20 coins in here, silver coins. 20? Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. So that, that's that's the coin that came out. Oh, I see. And so they, so in that plastic tube, they still are in their own plastic. Um, no, 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 no. We, we repackage uh, yeah. depending on how many someone buys. If they're buying one, they get a capsule. If they're buying two, three, four, five, we'll send them in plastic flips. If it's if it's more than say fifteen, they'll come in a in a tube. We'll give them a tube, but you can right. buy all those things separately as well. Okay, well that's really that's really interesting. So let's get on to the meat and potatoes then, shall we? Because uh, I, I mean, clearly the, the the audience will be watching this. Some of them will be going, "Oh, that Vobesy is so ignorant, <laughs> He's so ignorant." But then I've not bought. You see, this is, and it's only in recent times when we realise that fiat currency is continually really just decreasing in value, and gold and silver mm. and and other commodities. Um, are, can hold their value. So let's just talk about a little bit about that. Gold, you always think of gold as something that people do invest in because it holds its value. It might go up and down a bit, but it never sort of bottoms out as far as I know. It's it's always increasing. Is that true? What, that people would always think about buying it. Well, or, no, that, that or, gold is... is it's, <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, people always, you know, they always yeah, want it, don't yeah. they? But so, uh, it's, it goes generally yeah. over long period. It's going up rather than going down. It's. I think it's one of the most stable things that you can buy. It will fluctuate like everything. But what I've seen, I've been in business for 14 years now. So over that time, I've seen stock markets rise and fall. And the um, precious metals, gold, well, gold will tend to do the opposite to what the stock market is doing. But sometimes when the stock market is doing well, instead of dropping, the gold price just stays flat and does nothing. Right. So it doesn't tend to do, to have too dramatic a move. Well, certainly not more than anything else. But, um, I, I think it's always wise to look at different time periods. If you were, say you're thinking of investing for the next five years, have a look on the chart and see what it did in the last five years and look at the high to the low um, and see if that happened to you, would you be able to ride it out? Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. You know, could you cope with making that amount of loss? You know, because I just think people should go into things with their eyes wide open. No, yeah, no, absolutely. So if it's devalued, if especially if you are not prepared, you know, if you're keeping it for 50 years, the chances are it will have gone up, I imagine. Yeah, you don't make a profit or a loss until you actually sell. No. It might have gone down. So to say I've lost this much money, you haven't lost it till you sell. Right. No, that's a really good way of looking at it because until you until that moment, it's still there because next year or tomorrow, it may for whatever reason spike up. And you go, oh, I'll sell it now, and and that's when you've you've made or not made your your back. So why do so I I'm coming to this completely new, thinking that the money that we have or the currency that we have is in this dangerous situation and so i've i've not really thought about investing because i've never had money to invest um you know and so i've never really thought of it as something that you buy instead of perhaps your stocks and shares and things but i guess that's what people mostly buy gold or silver for is as an investment is it yeah i mean if you think about if you if you if you get your portfolio so you've got an um, say you've got Ten thousand pounds and or hundred thousand pounds maybe, and you split it up into ten thousand pound chunks, and you did something different with each of those. So and you were you were, say you had ten percent in gold, you know gold, silver, or precious metals, ten or twenty percent, and then, and then you then another amount might be in some property. Some, and you might look at the stock market and go, well, it's not all rubbish. 
some what sectors are going to do well in this in this environment no mm. so so you know you might have a business yourself and think i'm going to invest in my own business so you know and if you've got lots of different assets that behave in different ways and you need some money at some point you pick the one that's done that's that's made you some money and maybe is ready to go down again rather than selling the thing which is about to perform so right. when you've got a diversified portfolio you have more choice right i'm Does with that you make no, sense? yeah no you and you uh, elucidated that very clearly to some thicko like myself who's never thought of it um, in that way. And of course, people watching who perhaps do this anyway will know exactly what you're talking about. But I'm always aware that there are people who are coming to this for the first time and maybe like me thinking, well, we got money in the bank, as you say, might be 10,000, might be 100,000. And we know that fiat currency is losing value. We keep getting inflation. It's every day it's got, we can buy less with it than we can today. What can I do with it? Yeah. And and you've just put that over incredibly well to think of all these different ways rather than just shoving it, say, all into gold or all into something because sooner or later you might need to turn that back into whatever the currency is to be able to buy things. It's just really important to, to make a plan and think think ahead what when and if you're going to need some money in the near future don't tie it up in anything mm. you want to keep that about um liquid so yes. that you can you can easily get your hands on it you don't want to have to then sell something and lose some money because you sold it you know so this is where i think that's the difference between going onto a website you, you know like as you can go on 24 7 you don't need to talk to anyone. You, if you know what you want, you can just go and buy it. But if you feel like you need a bit of hand-holding, then that's where we come in. And we're here to office hours, and you know we're able to give people a little bit of guidance, steer them in the right way, talk to them about what they're trying to achieve, and help them to find the right thing. Because it's very easy to, to go wrong and buy something that that doesn't suit your purpose and pay over the odds for it mm. um, you know we've we're we haven't there's no shame in not knowing no you know? absolutely yeah. i based my whole life on not knowing no but i think that a lot of people come to into you know come and see me and they're apologizing for their ignorance but it's not their fault no we weren't taught that we should be able to make our own financial decisions. We've, we've been taught to believe in the bank manager who now doesn't exist at all and yes, the financial right. advisor to give us guidance or an accountant. But, you know, when I've spoken to um, clients from other ethnic backgrounds, like in Asia, China, um, China, India, they they they're sort of a bit horrified that we trust our financial advisors rather than you know that in with our family affairs <laughs> yes well i mean i mean when you put it like that that does make an uh, it makes perfect sense that what's your private family business that you're sharing and and these days of course all that data is being collected and potentially sold on that people know all about your th stuff but it's your own business your own family business you should have that and as you say we're not taught this it's certainly not taught in schools um, and we've just been shuffled like so many things and my regular viewers will know how I talk about this sort of area that we've been dumbed down in so many ways so you're quite right but it's a, it will be very much appreciated that people can come to you and say look I don't know anything about this and and they don't need to apologize for it no, I and sometimes that. I'll send people away and I'll say to them, I'll be quite honest and I'll say, you know, listen to what, you, what you're trying to achieve and this isn't the right thing for you right now. Mm. So, you know, or yes, but like go in slowly, get to understand it, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, we can't advise people. We're not, we're not regulated. <laughs> Our business is unregulated. 
uh, we don't we don't ask as many questions. Uh, you know, we 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 will listen to what people want to tell us, but you don't people don't have to tell us anything. You no, know, we'll do our best to to give them some guidance and put them in the right direction. You know, we try and keep on top of you know the latest tax rules and things like that as well. So capital gains tax is something that's affected a, a few of our customers recently. Right. So it so so I mean, if you have a little business or a big business, and you can you write off some of your expenses as 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 an investment to buying gold because you're buying it for the business to as a way of making money um no not well not right off but you can you can invest you can invest either as a business or as an individual and that would be treated as capital in the business right yeah so yeah so so i guess if you've declared it as part of your business then the gains that you get from it at what point you sell is then you have to record that, I guess. It's yeah, it would be within the business. I mean, that's the sort yeah. of thing I can help people get their heads around on a sort of one-to-one basis. <clears throat> what's what's the difference then, more or less, um, between gold and silver? Is there a vast difference in cost <clears throat> between a bar of gold and a bar of silver? <clears throat> um, and if one is a lot more than the other, or there's not, much, or, or if there's no difference, how do you make the decision which one to buy? Um, I think it depends on why you want it. So, if you're buying purely for investment, you buy maybe just buy a big bar of silver like this one. You know, that's wow! Look at that. The hundred ounces. It weighs. Uh, 3.1 kilos is that what you see in the um in the films where they're you know they've robbed a train the bullion train and they're yeah. carrying these great lumps <laughs> across those those are market bars uh they would be 400 ounces so four times that size oh right in 400 gold. in so gold four times, sorry four, four times, times yes in gold right uh, so that's 12 and a half kilos. So just one of those would be quite a considerable amount of money, presumably. Yeah, that would, I don't know what that would be now. Um, no. Uh, yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I mean, ha- yeah, I mean, you know, obviously the, the price of gold is going to change. But the, it, there is, is there a big difference between gold and silver in price? Huge, huge. Oh, huge. Right. Yes. I'm assuming that gold is is worth a lot more. Showing my so ignorance again. An ounce of, like you said, an, an ounce of gold. This is an ounce of gold. Yeah. Um, these coins as well, they're British legal tender coins. So on the back, you see that. Oh that's yeah, there's the king's head. Yeah. Uh, it's a hundred. It's a hundred pounds, face value. Yeah. It's a hundred pound face value. Yeah. Yes. So it's legal tender. Um, and it's capital gains tax exempt. Right. Oh, okay. And so, what would that be worth now? Then more than a hundred pounds, I'm guessing. So this is six one point one about one thousand six hundred. It's a spot price of gold at the moment. And is that about? I'm guessing that's about the size of a tuppenny piece, maybe a bit bigger, two uh, pence, uh, or a, fifth, a bit about, bigger. Bit bigger. It's not. It's not as big as this one. Uh, that I've got the silver. Yeah. What is this? A sovereign yeah, or something? Smaller. So this is thirty-two point. They go in a thirty-two point five capsule. So I don't know exactly the diameter of this, but no. Um, but that's sixteen. And that and yours would be about thirty-nine, thirty-eight, thirty-nine. So that's the silver coin. So I put them next to each other. That's, oh right. They're both the same. Oops. They're the same weight. Yeah, a bit higher. There we go. The silver and the gold, so right. they're the same weight as each other. They cost the same to produce, apart from the metal that's in them. Yes. So the markup on the silver is a lot higher than it would be for the gold. So um, silver is trading about nineteen pounds an ounce, and gold is trading at 
like I said, it's like 16, 1630-something an ounce. Yeah, 16 and 60, it's 1,630 an ounce. Yeah. That's a consider, that is a very considerable difference. Um, and there's so, VAT on these as well. On, the silver. on silver, yeah. Now, I heard that that's related to being in the EU. I don't know how true that is, but that it became a tax <laughs> that they put on because we became members of the EU. We're not supposedly members of the EU. I don't know if all the forms have been done. So we, I don't know why we're still paying VAT on it, but the government like to take their chunk. Yeah, they like to have a more, ta- more tax of battery, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, and you can't so that, get that money back when you sell because... You it, can't get the VAT back? No. no. That's interesting. So, but the VAT's only on silver, but not on gold. Mm-hmm. So, the, you know, this is... Uh, this is where you've got to think. And, of course, one's a lot more money for a lot less. But the lot less, the fact that, that you've got that big silver bar, however much, how much would that big silver bar be that you showed us? I should have looked these up before. Oh, yeah. Can you I, don't, I mean, approximately, approximately. I mean, because if you've got several of those to hide, you know, because presumably you've got to put them somewhere, haven't you? You're not going to yeah. use them as um, as roof tiles. And hope nobody looks. Um, plus, they'll tarnish. Um, but you've got to put them somewhere, either in a safe. Or you wouldn't want to put them in the bank, presumably, because they might not give them back to you. So the one hundred ounce silver bar is two thousand and eighty-eight eleven plus VAT. So two thousand eight. So, so you right. get a lot more silver than you know. You get gold. Yeah. But those gold. What did you call them? Not florins. The um, the Britannia. The Britannias, which are smaller than smaller than what I've got here, as you just demonstrated. Easier to um, have a number of them if you've got the money, of course, but easier to hide. Yes. You know, to sort of make disappear wherever you. Because you, I mean, it'd be silly to put them in the bank, wouldn't it? Unless you've got, you know, tons of them. Yeah, I mean, we do have storage. We do, don't use banks for storage, though. Right. We use, right. A, so you, we use a professional custodian to. I to like that. Offer. Yeah, use professionals rather than banks. And we don't do it ourselves either. We do no. use a professional company that just guards guards precious things, and you have to go through yes. several, several security gates to get to it. Right. Well, that's so, that's in sort of Fort Knox type kind of, thing. Yeah. yeah. So so if you. Um, however, if you can, the raw men um, who make these coins, well, you can also buy from the raw men and have them stored by the raw men. But then they're also guarded by the British police. <laughs> so yes, that might uh, or the army or something. So that might not be that desirable. <laughs> no, but if you've bought, I mean, let's let's just say it's quite a considerable amount. To me, it would be a huge amount if you had a hundred thousand pounds in those coins. You're looking at what are you looking about? Eight, eight, eight coins? Well, no, 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 hundred, no. 80 coins. Okay, so this, so a, a tube like this. Well, yeah. <laughs> sorry, yeah. my coordination is terrible. Don't worry. A tube like that would, um, it holds 10 coins and that would be um, uh, like 1,600 pounds, uh, 16,000, 16,000 pounds. Right, so you're looking at about um, four or five of those. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and you know, they 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 just look like you could have vegetables in there on the. I mean, you could literally have them in the kitchen, as if they were just spice racks, and put sage, and dill, and parsley. You know, nobody would know. How would that? You know, a thief coming in would wouldn't know because you'd know. But I suppose my point being is, if you've got quite a considerable amount of money value in gold. It's actually quite easy to to hide at home if you wanted to, unless the house burnt down um, or somebody stole them. But they'd have to know they were there, and yes. presumably you could put them under the under the floorboards or, you know, drilled into the ceiling and and hit. You know, be a million places you could hide them, and nobody would know. Yeah. Which which makes it very handy, um, yeah. unless uh, you know, unless somebody takes your property over and you can't get in, um, or you could. Or even better, draw a map and go out somewhere. 
<laughs> no, I'm not suggesting that for a moment. That would be silly. Well, I did uh, actually went to a preppers meeting one time, <clears throat> and uh, this chap was telling me about how he, um, how he'd bought something like I don't know two thousand pounds worth of chia seeds, and he'd buried them in a woodland. He said don't use trees because he went back to get them and they'd cut the woods down. Oh no. He said if you're going to if you're going to bury your stash make sure that there's something solid that you've got as a, as a, a landmark. Ah. <laughs> uh, there's a film. There's a it's a 1950s 1960s film with Sid James and Lionel, not Lionel Jeffries, um, anyway, it doesn't matter, it's the, it's the old stars. They rob a bank or something, they shove the money into the hollow of a tree, they get caught, they do prison, they come out of prison and then they go to get the money, they know where the tree is, and it just so happens the tree is in the front of a police station in the compound. <laughs> and they don't know, and they're trying to find ways to get it. So, um, yeah, hiding hiding money or precious metals in the environment you don't know how it's going to change so you need complete control of that but it did make me laugh um so let me let's let's move on now because to um and there's probably a million questions i've not asked that i should ask one of the reasons i'm interested in gold and silver particularly is because if the currency collapses and we're told it's likely to um and if we are moved to this CBDCs that a lot of people never ask when we don't want, people are coming up with imaginative ways of having a fluid currency that you might use things like Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, which is sort of invisible money in my book, um, or you might want to have something else physical that you can buy sort of in shops and things. And we did talk about the gold backs, um, and I had the chap who sort of came up with the concept, although I understand that Valerian, I think it is, already make something similar. Um, and so you spray this gold between two polymers, and you've got a note, so it looks like a £5 note or a £10 note in the old ways, but it has its own value depending on how much gold is in there which I know you're going to tell me a staggering fact in a minute about because you told me that a few seconds ago. Um, but do you think in a society going forward, if, if people wanted to use gold and silver a bit like they used to, could we use gold and silver to trade in a, going to the shops and buying things from people? Yeah, I mean, I think you can use anything, really. Uh, as a method of exchange and gold and silver are unperishable. It's not like having a sack of potatoes that's going to rot or... Mm. Um, and know, recognisable around the world, of course. Yes, yes. Um, so it's a store of wealth, isn't it? That's what precious metals are. Um, and and I think the, the gold backs, are, they're beautiful. They're, they're lovely, though. Um, um, I'd you know, be very tempted to, to own some myself. Um, and it's, you know, the value of those is, is it, it's it's the faith in, in the currency, isn't it? And the fact that they're hard to produce and they've got something tangible in them. I think that's what gives them value. Right, and, so not uh, necessarily the gold itself. No, because the gold itself, if you were to buy it for the gold, it would be a very expensive way of buying gold because of the amount of gold that's in them doesn't really relate to the face value. Not yet. It might do in the future. But right. um, if you said that, was it 4 or $5? Um, yeah, I think the, 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 thousand, the thousandth troy ounce, which is yeah. just, you know, the, the basic one, I think was was coming out to being about four to five pounds if you were to buy it. Okay. You know, you'd have to buy a number of them to get over the the um, shipping costs mm. and all of that. But um, yeah, so it would be about four, five, possibly six pound, depending on where you got it from. Mm. Yeah. So the the content, the gold content of that, we 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 worked out if if the gold price is is six is um, sixteen hundred pounds an ounce. A thousandth of an ounce is one pound sixty something. Right. So, 
so, so your six so your five pound of what it what you it's cost you to get yeah actually is is has only got one point six one pound sixties worth of gold in it yeah so, so, th- so you're buying a lot of processing and other stuff for for gold mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and if you were to sell it back to a dealer i don't know how that would be handled i wouldn't like to be the dealer offering somebody less than mm. less than so much less than what they pay for it yeah that so that would be the risk but if it, it but as you say if it was I mean, we use promissory notes and we assume that we can buy a bag of potatoes with a fiver um, and hopefully a bit more than a bag of potatoes. But um, we we do that and it, and all it, well, I was going to say all it is is paper, but it's plastic now, isn't it? It's these plastic notes. Um, but if that was flooding the market as an everyday note, then again, there's that, there's a certain part of trust and faith that goes in with that it's not the intrinsic value in and of itself but if you did want to use say silver or gold to buy things um you in the old days used to get these people who would chip you know i think that's how pieces of eight got their name is it where they would chip off a bit from somewhere and say well i'll give you now is that i mean you wouldn't want to be able to do that would you no i mean we've we we have these um, these uh, you can break them off. They're designed to break into twenty pieces. That's a twenty gram bar. Oh right. So, so it's like it's like a chocolate bar, that. Yeah. So it works. Does, and that nice, works in the. Very nice packaging. Mm. But I think I don't know if that one opens out. Some of them do. Um, there's a silver silver version here. Right. Oh, hang on. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yeah. Oh, I see. Look at that. That's fascinating. So, I mean, then that would be more practical because um, the silver, those little blocks of silver, they would become more like loose change then. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, in a world, in a world of um, t- tyranny and dictatorship you you could sort of go well thanks for the offer on on your cbdc's but actually i've got this silver um, chocolate bar that actually breaks up and i can still go and buy my bags of potatoes and carrots and milk and things from people and then and and the fact that they, they've effectively make their own coins that all bit that they're square they're just pieces of silver pieces of eight you know and people can then it's a currency isn't it it's yes a, it's that's real i mean that's so reassuring because i think a lot of people are thinking oh my god what can we do we're going to be stuck um and if they know they can just buy these these chocolate like bars that they can break up that's you, you know that's giving people hope yeah and you will pay a premium for that because it's not going to be as cheap as buying a lump like this right no yes so, but you're, but you're buying you're buying convenience yes. and manoeuvrability, aren't you? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, as you are with the gold backs. I mean, it's the, it's yes. the same. But you're yes. you're probably yes. um, with the silver. I mean, okay. Admittedly, it's smaller, and you could lose it. So you'd need a a purse. But people managed in the past, for goodness' sake. You know, we're not all um, stupid. We should be able to cope with it. Um, is I'm guessing silver is not magnetic, is it? No. No, it's gold. No. No, that's interesting. Um, I'm just looking here. That one's very dull. I must have, I must have handled that one more than the other one. Stop handling them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm getting precious now about my pieces of silver. But that's really interesting. That is fascinating. That we could, we could have a system. I, and again, it, you, you just go to the shopkeeper, don't you? especially independent businesses, and say, look, I've got silver. Or I've got gold. Um, so what would a small square, a chunk of gold be? I'm, I'm imagining it's like something like 50, 50 quid or 100 quid. Yeah, no, it's about, if you, if you look at on the spot price of a, of a piece, it would be about 50 pounds. If you bought a gram on its own, you'd probably pay about 70, I don't know, on gold. Right, but, yeah. But it's so doable, isn't it? I mean, it's doable. So if you've got a builder and you've got a hole in your roof during the winter and you go, oh, crikey, and it's either that and he says, well, I don't deal in these CBDCs, what are you going to do? And you go, well, hang on, there's a bit of gold. That's about 
50 quid or 100 quid or two of those and i make it up with the silver you've got yeah. you've got you've got coins of the realm again yeah I've, i mean i bought a car from a secondhand car and i went and put deposit down i gave the guy a sovereign so oh did you so yeah so it is it, it is workable i mean that that i you know i think what you're doing is you're 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 showing us that there is hope in this in this world of money that's just losing value mm. and the great thing about it is that the government doesn't the government and the banks don't get a cut every oh. time it changes hands <laughs> so. that yeah well there you go that is a good middle finger up isn't it that i love that um and and this is what we need we need people to feel that they are in control as you said of their own money they haven't got to rely on your uh, specialist um, bankers and um, accountants and um, money lenders and all of that, assuming they've got the money to begin with, um, it, it, it is very empowering. Mm. It is very empowering. Um, so now let's have a look. Well, you've got a you've got a website. Let's have a quick look at your website because um, we must give you a plug for coming on. On the hang on, let's get it on the full screen. Um, here we go. Look at all of this. Uh, so I'll leave the link in the description. Blyer Bullion, it's called. And you can look at all these things and all these bits and bobs. And I know you said to me, you said earlier as well, you, you, you deal in the previously owned, which is somewhat cheaper. Yeah, um, if, you have, if you go on some margin scheme, um, margin if scheme. you go into the, men, into the shop, Click shop. Oh yeah. Oh, here scheme. we are. Margin yeah. scheme. And that tells you about the margin scheme. And in there, you've got products that are VAT inclusive. So oh, there's that Canadian one. I've got that one. That's what somebody. Okay. So that's the price, including VAT, which is a little bit less than what you pay if you. The other prices on our website are plus VAT. So you can't always sort. It's not always a good idea to sort by price alone. Right. So, um, Look at that. They are beautiful, aren't they? And and when you're when you're comparing products, it can be useful to just throw them in the shopping cart, and then once they're in there, it's a lot easier to to uh, look at them next to each other. Oh, I see. Yes. Um, before you decide what you want. Gosh, look at this. There's millions of them. Yeah, we, we like to have quite a wide choice because we've got different people are buying for different reasons. Some are collectors and they, yeah. they buy these things for their beauty um, and the collectability, whereas other people might be um, just buying purely for the investment um, side of things. Um, so that, that this is another conversation I might have with someone is what's your motivation and just to make sure that they're buying they're not buy, paying over the odds for a pretty coin that they're buying as an investment and they're going to sell it back to a dealer one day you know and they don't so I just like to get people just to do a, a double check because I think yes. we can get very emotional with our investment decisions and sometimes it's good to be able to set some of that to one side and, yes you know um and i haven't asked you how easy it is to once you've you've got bought it for investment purposes how easy it is to then sell it on and and get your your cash version out of it or your disposable yeah. you know the money the other side the the currency back yeah, so you can sell back to us and we will give you a couple of percent below the spot price generally. You know, that will vary depending on what it is yeah. and, and how buoyant the market is. Right. And and, and, the, and so if it's come in a packaging, it's a bit like, you know, the people who've bought toys or various things in the, in the past, in the 50s, and they turn up with a Thunderbird thing and it's in immaculate packing that all helps as well does it yeah please don't um cut your packaging up <laughs> right i've had people who've paid loads of money 
for some very nice boxed items and they've got rid of the boxes because it takes up too much space. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. Well, that that well that, that's that is worth knowing because if you've done that and you go, oh, I've got all these, it's, I can just clamp them all together in a little and sellotape them together somewhere and shove them somewhere. Then you're losing the value as well. Yeah, I mean, it does depends on the box, of course. If it's just an ordinary box, it doesn't matter. But if you bought a royal, you've paid for a royal mint proof coin um, with the certificate and the box and everything, and you've throw that away what was the point of paying yes. an extra 30% over the spot price, which oh, I yes. recommend, by the way. We do sell those in the secondary market, those boxed um, items. So if people particularly are after those, have a look for a second-hand one because you'll get a much better deal. Right. Oh, interesting. Yeah. There are, so and... We have got some very pretty coins if you... If that's what, what if that's, if that's what you yeah if that's yeah. your bag um and and do you how do they how do people get these coins do they are you deliver them in a big uh you know big van turns up with eight security blokes with tattoos and radios and all of that um or do you have to collect them or do they can you get them in the post and and presumably they're insured and things so so, so sending to us you we usually recommend people use raw mail special delivery. Right. Um, or deliver it in person. And then and buying from you, they would come in the in the post in a similar way? Yeah. So we will send it in the post with raw mail or with a courier. Right. Okay. Well that that's good. Because I suppose really and truly you don't want a great big special high security van turn up with several blokes with walkie talkies and things because your neighbours would be going oh he's out there buying more gold isn't he look there they are delivering great big bars coming in as much as appealing as that is um caroline this has been really really interesting i'm sure that i haven't asked enough questions so i may have to ask you to come back but we're coming up to an hour's conversation believe it or not um and and it is amazing I will leave the link in the description. People can go and have a look at your website and they can uh, get in touch with you. You're a, you're a small company, you're not like sort of 20 no. employees all um, rushing around trying to make the biggest profit possible. You're very personable. And, um, and I've met you in person at uh, events that I've been talking at, so uh, I can vouch for you, uh, which in this business is very, very important, I think. Yeah. Um, but thank you so much for coming on the show and telling us and telling me especially not to handle to handle <laughs> and duff them yeah, down pleasure. yeah but we're, we're uh, back I, north devon and we have a small office so you know i'm more than happy to welcome people to come and have a chat and a coffee and a biscuit oh so, that's brilliant so did you you said you're down towards devon yes north, north devon north devon down yeah. there in the West Country where they speak like that. You want some gold? I got you some gold. You don't worry about it. We're a lot more laid back than in that there London. <laughs> than that there London. Good for you. I love it. Brilliant stuff. Thank you so much for, for spending the last hour with me and telling me all about it. I shall go and um, see if I can afford a, a little nugget of gold um, and then try and find somewhere to hide it. I really appreciate it, and I'm sure the viewers do. It'll be interesting to see all the comments. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, go and check out uh, Caroline's website, Blair's, um, Blair's Bullion. I'll leave the link in the description. Of course, you can go and click through. In the meantime, I'll be back with more monologues and wonderful interviews. Until then, from Caroline and myself, thanks for watching, and goodbye. <laughs>